Good morning, you bad, beautiful bitches. You, you were listening to the No Limits podcast, and I got to be honest, I'm a little nervous for this episode. When are you okay? proposing? Um, what? what proposing, was? like with a diamond ring for me. This is so great having you on the show, Ashley. Thank you so much for coming. This has oh, been great. It's a pleasure. Good Mine question. Is, yeah. You, you look great. You know, enough about me. Let's talk about you. All right. 3.2 carats. <laughs> I don't even know how to spell carrots, you know, jeez, you, you look dapper. All right. You, and so I appreciate the question. The answer is soon. All right. So why don't you, we actually get that. That's probably one of our top, yeah. uh, top viewed questions we get is when's the proposal it's coming soon people good <laughs> lord all people right? just want to know they want to be prepared they want to be ready maybe I try can... decaf coffee you know mm, no that's just anyway back to you all right, you have a th- one of the thickest Boston accents known to Boston, Thank I believe. You. I appreciate it. Okay, so rapid fire. Don't mm-hmm. even think about it. Carter. Carter. Piper. Piper. Harper. Harper. Muffler. <laughs> Muffler. Garden. Garden. That is. Ju- it's tough to unhear the Boston accent there. I mean, it that is. is yeah. You got to like t- teach people the where the accent is because I get a lot of questions and people like say um, boat and I'm like mm. what the. Boston accent happens when the vowel A is followed by a consonant R. Hello, and it has grammar. to be ah, not. What was know, it? Ah. What? The letter A. Mm. Mm. Hmm. But yeah, you know what I mean? Like people are always like, say boat. Like, how come I don't hear your accent when you say Kevin? And right. I'm like, where do you want me to? Right. Do you want me to yell with a cigarette or something? Like, this you know. see this is why I was nervous for this episode because <laughs> it's just it's a lot to translate you know Peter's going to be subtitles. here working late hours all right transcribing this transcribing you know? yeah I think yeah. it's a yeah. I believe it's a, a word yeah um it's a real conversation at home though because I want to name our future son Carter right say try it but we can like Kata mm. I think it sounds great I don't love it my mom has the same accent we all you That's, know let's it out. put a pin in carter what a girl say harper hapa mm, i okay. love collie mm, mm. i don't as much that okay <laughs> richard richard okay there we go yeah mike steven we'll stick to those names mike steven that's mike comma or steven you know Good. That's just, yeah, this is a real conversation we have at home all the time. And that's a, I want to name our future son Carter after Dwayne Michael Carter Jr. Obviously little of Wayne, course. which is another argument at home, but walk us through. I know this is another top question we got yeah. too. We put a poll out on Instagram the other night of a questionnaire we took for top questions for the two of us. One of the biggest ones is how did we meet? Walk us through the story of how you and I met. Yeah. So it was a dark and stormy night. Here we and- go. <laughs> Every time we get asked this, like we'll go live on like whether it's TikTok or Instagram. Every time someone asks us, she'll just make up the most obscene story on the planet. You had like I just had it was a dark and stormy night. We were parasailing. Are you saying got a plane? Are you saying dark? Is that what I? Yeah, dark and stormy. Okay, it's hmm. I don't know. <laughs> no, just kidding. It was actually like the hottest day of the year. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, so let's let, let's go to the beginning. So mm-hmm. COVID hit, right? Yes. Yeah. So. I was never on dating apps. Like I just loved being single, all this stuff. And people don't realize that Instagram is actually the number one dating mm-hmm. app. And so what did you do? I slid into those DMs. You slid into those DMs. Do you remember what you slid in about? <sighs> yeah, you do. Don't pretend like you don't. <laughs> I know it was something stupid about the Patriots. I'm pretty yeah. Sure. Yes. So it was, um, what was it? Gronk had just announced he was like coming out of retirement. Mm-hmm. And I said something like, how, who knew like Edelman would be the person we trust? And you like slid in or something and you were like, (laughs) so I don't know. (laughs) And it was love. It was love. No. And then I, she saw a t-shirt I was wearing that had the words RX bar on it. Cause I used to work for RX bar back in the day. I love RX bars. So we were, this is where a lot of relationships go or a lot of single guys will skew and kind of stay away from sliding the DMs because Mm -hmm. they're trying to close on the first DM, you know? This is a long game. I probably DM'd you in what? April of season one of COVID. Yeah, I think. Yeah, exactly. April. Right. And then we didn't actually meet until July. Yeah. Talk about a long sales cycle there, gang. Okay. That is. And one of the the keys to this was uh, I you, you swiped up on a store that said um, I had the RX bar shirt and you said, yeah. oh, my God, I love RX bars. So I was like, "Ooh, here's my time to pounce. 
So I said, what's your address? I'll load you up with a pallet of our X bars. I was also just like, wi- not winging it. I don't know what the word is, but I don't know you. And I'm like, yeah, he has my address. Got her address. Pretty big deal. Okay. Yeah. And since COVID, COVID's happening, the world's shut down. Bars are closed. Clubs are closed. Restaurants are closed. I write a, on a sticky note on the box. And I say, since the bars are closed, have a bar on. No, what was it? Since the bars are closed, have a bar on me. Yeah. Boom. Put it right on the top of the box. Hello, presto, change yo. I still have the picture and stuff. It's yeah, so cute. pretty sentimental yeah. stuff. And the best part about that, though, is so now come July after our state, you're coming to pick me up, which is also hilarious. I don't let anyone pick me up whenever I used to go on dates. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you said you're on your way. And I'm like, this kid's going to stand me up. Like, he hasn't asked for my address yet. So it was like, I don't know, an hour goes by or so. And I like text him, like, do you need my address? You're like, no, I have it from the RX See files. that? Memory of an elephant. Okay, we never forget. Slash did that iPhone. freak you out or did that impress you that I remember your address? It honestly impressed me. I remember, because um, you called me on the way over and- What was it? You called me on the way over. Over, okay, she's saying over, just so the jury knows. Back to you, sorry. <laughs> and I don't pick up the phone also. Like, I don't talk on the phone, but I did. And you had asked, you like picked up all these snacks for like the beach, after I was at the beach. And I, I like asked if I should get cheers cause I have cheers at the house, whatever. Mm-hmm. And you're like, no, I already have cheers. I have towels, I have a cooler, I have drinks, I have water. You had everything. And I remember I like texted my friends after I was like, guys, like, oh my God. Pretty, I have, yeah. I have some sisters. So right? I think that's so I know really to... what sold me. You know, it was a lot of effort right from the beginning. Mm, mm-hmm. yeah. I remember first calling you that day. I'm on my way. To, I'm, I'm from Wyndham, New Hampshire originally. So I'm driving to East Boston, <laughs> sweating profusely, nervous as all hell. Wait, and the best part you have to say when you get to my house, but continue. Yes. And I call her and I'm like, I should probably like actually speak with her before just like, you know, Showing meeting up. her in person. <laughs> so I call her. I don't know if I said this to you before, almost turned around the moment you picked up the phone. Why? Because all I hear is like a large Dunkin's iced coffee <laughs> swirling like a cigarette. And you're like, hello. I don't what smoke. do you want? <laughs> Ma, the car. And I was like, wow, I should freaking, I don't know if I can bring this home to my mother. I actually think when you called me, I was like peeing. Oh. And I had to like pause it to like answer the phone. Mm. I'm like, I can't be doing that first Phone call, have yeah. you met the kid? Almost turned around there. Yeah. And then once I got to your house, I uh, almost <laughs> turned around there. <laughs> turned around, got kicked out. <laughs> I, I park right in front of her house. And mind you, I am uh, a kid who's used to, you driveways. know, a, a suburban, yeah. you know, driveways. Okay. I pull up, I got a parallel park. Her dad's it's outside. It's a handicap spot too. Handicap spot. So we're nervous. Uh, and lo and behold, who's <laughs> right out there on the sidewalk? I thought it was just a random guy out there. It's her father watching me parallel park. Yeah. Doesn't know I'm there for her. Mm. He watches me parallel park and then proceeds to yell at you. Yell at me. Yeah. You can't park here. And I was like, I'm so, no, sir. I don't have season tickets to the pads. All right. Jeez. I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> when Bob watches you, this. You can't, <laughs> you can't park your car here. And I was like, okay, that's. I think you literally were like walking towards him, like sh- going to shake his hand. Yes. You like don't even know what's happening. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, and yeah. then boom. Yeah, look, look at us. us. Now I'm waiting for 3.2 carat ring. We minimum. Do you, there's there is a ring shortage. I know There's that. not. My there, brother just proposed. There no. Yeah. I think that mm-hmm. could be a blood diamond. I would check that. That okay. with yeah. I don't know why ru- life is so long, you know, and it is doesn't need to be rushed. Am I right? No. Rome wasn't built in a day, okay? But pressure does create diamonds. So I see your angle, okay? Yeah. Um, fast forward to now. Yeah. I basically, you were living in the North End. Yes, you helped me move in. That was actually first date, July. You and me, I like was telling you I'm moving into the North End, September 1st, move in date like everyone else. And you're like, yeah, like I have a truck, I'll I'll move you in. And I'm like, geez, this is a bit fast. You want to be in my little life in two months? Like, bro, I don't even know if I want to like, Stay the entire date. Mm. Oh, <laughs> kidding. Yeah. My parents are married in six months, right? So, okay. Oh, did I say that aloud? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't, I said that aloud. Holy shit. Yeah. It okay. doesn't help my you case should, at you all. You should go talk to your father. He has good advice. What an idiot that guy is. <laughs> Let me tell you. I'm so grounded. <laughs> On the couch. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Back to you. Yeah. So, what were we saying? You're, we're moving you into oh, your yeah, apartment. Oh, yeah. You moved me into the North End. Um, 
which was funny because that was actually a running joke in the beginning of our relationship. You're like, you only get me around to move you in, and then after mm. I moved in, there's another reason why I was keeping you around. Something I don't. You know. had a lot of walls up early days that I had to me? beat Never. the walls down. You know, build the trust. And yeah. then there'd be like a barbed wire fence <laughs> that you had to crawl over, and then there'd be like another wall. So we were slowly building that. It took a while, but you stuck around. Uh, yes, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, shortly after that, she moves in with me, <laughs> like very quickly, like a like a cat to cat. Well, my apartment didn't have laundry, so <sighs> immediately See? I already had moved in with you because I was like, well, where else am I going to do my laundry? It's always a thing with you. That you know? was it. I was with you for the laundry. Yeah, there's yeah. always. I'm only going to date him because he's got a truck to help me move in. I did your laundry too, though. I'm only going to move in with him because he's got laundry in unit. Mm. That it. What's it's rare. What is it? Rare. Country like, of origin. <laughs> <laughs> That's, the subtitles on you is, I believe she's saying rare, if I'm yes, not mistaken. Thank you. An adjective, yeah, I believe. Yeah. After two years, you figured it out. Yeah. What's besides the uh, obvious language barrier between the two of us? What's the worst part about this relationship? The worst part. Would you say? Like literally? Uh, no, uh, metaphorically. <laughs> well, I don't know if we're like. You know, dive it deep right now. Get on in there. Joking. Is it the constant I, gas? Is that becoming an issue? What's <laughs> What's the worst thing? Seriously, it, that needs you need to see a doctor. But that doesn't even sound like me. <laughs> um, I think it's that we're both stubborn Type A people, mm. um, which has so many pros because we're both so driven and like mm -hmm. motivated and like smart, and we like do our own research and like we know what we're talking about. Um, but we're both the same people that. We both have to have the last word. We both have to have it our way, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that's probably like where we, I don't, not even clash, but you know. Yes. Yeah, yeah I agree. Same? Uh, it's it's your OCD for sure. Uh, she, <laughs> we have an M&M jar and she- Peanut M&Ms though. See what I mean? Okay, but the peanut M&Ms, there's a difference. It could have been packing peanuts. The audience doesn't give a damn, okay? I do. That's, we have a bowl of, of uh, peanut M&Ms. And they and change with holidays. So right now it's the Halloween um, ones that have the purple, the green, and the orange. Right, great call out. I'm that, just saying, like right. during 4th of July, it's the red, white, and blue this ones. Is the Christmas, it's OCD the green and red. creeping in to the cover. She has to make sure there's an even number of peanut M&Ms in that jar at all times. Did you crush it at the Scholastic Book Fair as a kid? Did I you always loved guess the beans? That. That's no, I didn't guess the beans, but I got like every book. He checks out. Yeah, <laughs> loser. <laughs> you, so it's definitely your, your hardest thing about you is your OCD. Like I'll make the bed, and then she'll strip the bed and remake the bed you because do it it's, wrong. it's 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 <laughs> there's nine hundred pillows, I believe. The tags. It. Yeah. See. You're heavy breathing and it's a problem, okay? I just, it's been two years. Why haven't you like- There's, you know, you know there's a war in Ukraine going on. Okay, there's bigger things to uh, fry out there, all right? And we're worried about the tags on the pillows I'm touching. I'm worried because I do it properly. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Peter's back there like Dr. Phil. I'm like, hey, here's the deal, <laughs> gang. This is what you need to do. Remember when we were actually, we can't really like talk about it, but we were doing an interview for a thing. And she brought up my OCD. She's like, is it like legit OCD or like are you just uh, neat? Because if it's legit OCD, like I think we that's talk about not. That. This is we? an interview for Amazing Race. Yeah. Yep. And they were like basically saying like if I have legitimate OCD, like it could be a problem. And I was like, yeah, no, it's legitimate OCD. Like, oh, this isn't have. me just saying it. Like I literally have seen doctors. I believe stage four terminal if I had to get <laughs> best wishes, yeah. you know. Jeez. Let's switch this. Best best part about this relationship. Best part? Mm -hmm. Oof. <laughs> don't don't uh don't blurt them all out at once now one at a time now jeez um, you know I think we both right from the get go no matter what whenever I say like I'm proud of you well, mm -hmm. one we both always give each other the um, recognition okay <laughs> I was like quite the opposite right um but we like are so supportive of one another you're so supportive of me. Um, but one thing I always love that whenever I say like, I'm so proud of you, whenever something would happen, whether it be with like social media, your job or this or that, you always say like, I'm so proud of us. Mm -hmm. Um, like we're very much a team and I think we both bring different strengths to the table. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think we both like recognize that very well within one another. Mm -hmm. 
I like that. Yeah. Wow. Beautifully said. I have more strengths, but like, I think. <laughs> this is, I don't know if I can do this for a lifetime. All right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> My sarcasm, definitely for sure. What was it? My sarcasm. Mm, okay. Sa- okay. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Thanks. We'll fix it. Yeah. Sarcasm. It's going to be, when we have kids, like how will this work language wise? Will they Wait, pick up Wait, you can't your- skip over. Hold on. Back, back track. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite thing about the relationship? Ooh, don't, don't. Right. Great, great follow. I didn't answer already. You sure? I think I I said that thing with the stuff. Right. Thing. Um, it's, <laughs> it's a copious amount of things, obviously. I would say um, your uh, support is definitely. That's exactly uh, what I just Oh, did said. you say that same? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That, you said that. You did say that, huh? Right. Uh, I can use, I can come up with another one, obviously, on the spot too, because they're so there's just they're so volume esque. Um, you did say the support thing. Um, hmm. Okay. We'll just leave it. You know, let's just. No, it's on. good. No, it's it's you, you have yeah. such a big, in your words, hot. You know, mm-hmm. your your heart is like the heart of a golden retriever. It's. Uh, I can almost do no wrong. It seems you know. Oh, you can. <laughs> Don't worry. More, more on the unconditional love side. Okay, that's really where I was getting up with that. So that's uh, there's so many things. Obviously, yeah, you're great. Really, you look great. Jeez. <laughs> Anywho, um, we before your phone dies too. We got some questions from Instagram. Yeah. You want to pull those up? Yeah. And let's we will do go it. one for one. We both put a poll up, more of a questionnaire on Instagram to ask. I feel uh, bad because I people not. You know, people are probably like, okay, usually when people ask questions, you know, you then answer them. Mm-hmm. And neither of us have answered them. But they'll they'll figure it out. Now's our time. I got one queued up for you as okay. you pick one out. Yeah, you um, do you guys have set date nights or spontaneous? I would say more spontaneous, right? 100%. Yeah. I mean, we definitely try to do them at least once a week. But, like, we're having a date night tonight. And it's a Thursday. Yeah. Um, spontaneous is the way to go yeah you know most of our favorite date nights are spontaneous yeah. date nights. no reservations yeah we walk well, that's like the plus with living in like the north end you just yeah. walk out and figure it out but yeah i think the spontaneous one keeps the uh keeps things fresh you keeps know it's spontaneous yeah wow i see what you did there <laughs> all right um so we talked about how we both met mm-hmm. um i liked this one i saw it last night if you could take one quality from the other what would it be oof one quality out of you yeah like if you you wish you had a quality of mine oh honestly your brain i wish you did too yeah (laughs) (laughs) sometimes it's so concerning your brain i'm shocked you even fit in this room not ego wise your intelligence is just harry potter s it's crazy talk thank you like it when we are um and mostly with like whether it's historical facts or like, I don't know how to mix up a witch potion because she's into that stuff. Oh, am I? Well, you just watch Hocus Pocus 2 like nine nights in a row. So I don't know what you're into. Hocus but Pocus 1, the second one was See what I mean? Uh, yeah, just your, your intelligence. Yeah. Thank you. Um, for me, for you type of thing, whatever, it would be your drive. You also like don't need a lot of sleep, which I don't really envy because I love sleep, <laughs> but I'm a type Can't of relate. girl. Yeah, exactly though. Like, we say good night and you pretend to sleep. And then once my mm-hmm. breathing changes, you're back on your phone, like yes. doing things. And then you're up at five in the morning, whatever it is, totally fine. Whereas I need to go to bed at eight and then I'll sleep until like mm. 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. And I'm still tired. Um, and I just feel like you get so much more done because of that. Yep. Um, I am, I'm so. like buddy the elf. I'm good. I'm, I got a full 45 minutes, you know, and I feel great about it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that is. I don't, uh, I'll typically use fall. That's probably why though my brain's bigger because I'm letting myself sleep. Right. Okay. Huh. Studies to be had there. Um, What has, this is from uh, SRR Cam on Instagram. Chat out. Uh, What has this relationship taught you most? Well, I'm not with the brain, so what have I taught you? (laughs) (laughs) What has it taught me most? Um, I can take this one first while you are brainstorming, because there's probably so many life lessons you've learned from (laughs) Sir Toots a lot over here. (laughs) 
<laughs> um, I have discovered the not exactly the key to success, but a huge. You mentioned how driven I am. That's uh, it, and don't get all sappy now, Kevin. But this it's that's backed by you. You know, mm-hmm. like my I get more drive the more connected you and I are, and the more you and I talk about. If we were like, eh, we're just gonna live in the city forever, like, yeah, we don't want kids, like, yeah. See, I can see your eyes bulging already. <laughs> I don't want kids. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then there wasn't that yeah. like, okay, like need to provide type scenario. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be so driven. I think too, just how you and I, uh, like, we talk about this all the time, but just like our roles within the relationship, like yeah. our our, I love the the financial side which those were like painful nights we used to have going through your budget sheets which was hilarious I've gotten better. you have gotten better first ones were pretty crazy yeah that was a lot of spending there well i mean it hasn't stopped well, i've just gotten better at the saving pot too right the pot. right yeah. so it, it's a good balance yeah you know thank you yeah i think i've learned um how needed i am <laughs> no, just kidding. Mm-hmm. see you are just <laughs> no. The I, worst. Think, I I think I've learned how to just be a team. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, you had to break down so many walls. I've been independent my entire life. I loved being single. I loved like only me to worry mm-hmm. about doing errands on my own, food shopping for myself. I loved just being single and alone and independent. Um, just, and I just think be single and geez, you got a lot, <laughs> a lot think, of pros there. You listen to them off pretty fast. I think there's like this, um, this like bad, um, view on being dependent or mm. de- on someone. Mm-hmm. And it's not that like, I can't live without you. I can't do anything without you. I think there's something really special about like finding your other person and being a team and knowing I can depend on you. In moments that like I am feeling not as independent, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think I think it's actually stronger. Like you saying, you had to break down those walls. I think it's actually a lot more stronger of myself um, to be able to break down those walls and rely on you for certain things. I think that's where the team aspect comes into right. a relationship. You know? Yeah, and I never had that in past relationships, so I think that's why. Look you at know? us, Air Five. Perfect. Healthy. Yeah. Wow. That is great. Wait, going off of though, what you said, yeah, um, someone actually asked, um, it was actually really sweet. Um, anyways, I don't need to find the exact words, but yeah. Um, how many kids do we want? Ooh, wow. This has been such, it's been a great, we should do this again sometime. We will. This yeah, is, this has yeah. been great. I've had blast. Have you, you've had fun, right? Five, right? Uh, in this economy, <laughs> that is, uh, wow. You um, said like you get that motivation from providing. Right. So if you have more kids, you get right. more motivation. Right. At that five, we almost become a petting zoo situation. That is, uh, uh, three is great. I think five is loftly. So maybe four. We <laughs> are we in the middle? Hostage. This is like a reverse hostage negotiation. <laughs> like four. How many kids want to get out of there? Um. Well, I want a set of twins. Right. You're a twin. I am a twin. Yeah. Um, three is good. Four. Okay. Four. We could. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Why don't we put a pen in it? That's okay. definitely three. Yeah. Go for three. I have the list of names we found Easton yesterday. We like Easton's good. Yeah. It sounds good when you say it too. Thank you. That's one more time with Carter. I just think you Carter. have it. Okay. Yeah. No. Nope. Easton Carter, come here. Do you like it? I. This is not natural. No. The, I heard Easton, but then did you ask? Could you smoke in here? Is that what you said after that? I didn't hear the second name. <laughs> what? What happened there? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, moving on here. Do you guys ever get hate? And if so, how do you deal with it? Mm, I blocked three people today. Ooh. Yeah. So you're quick, quick fingers on the blocking. Well, you taught, not that you taught me to block, but in the beginning, when we first started dating, when we first started dating, like you weren't really on social, Mm -hmm. like you had your TikTok and stuff like that. But, um, you know, whatever. So when I was brought on to your TikTok, like the first video I was, I got so much hate. Remember, like, <laughs> boo this girl. Yeah, like everyone like wanted to date you, so they were like mad I was there. So I got all these negative comments, like people just attacking me. 
Um, and I remember like every time I would get upset about it, you're like, Ash, like I'll delete the app. Like, I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. Like if it's bothering you this much, we don't need it, whatever. And that eventually died down. And then I got my own TikTok, and you know, I started getting the same hate and now it kind of got over it, but I would let it affect me so much all day long. Mm -hmm. And then like, it would affect if I would post something that like that again, or, you know, they, it's people know how to attack the stuff that makes you like, like that hurts you. Um, and after a while, I'm just, I just block. Like what? It just block. Like do you I, hear the reverse of that? Do you hear the applause as well? Like when people are like, yeah, this content's the best. You're beautiful. This is great. Unfortunately. I mean, now, now I do. Now I do. Before I used to definitely let the negative overpower all that. But now that's what I mean. I see a negative call. It doesn't have to be that bad anymore mm -hmm. at all. Just anything slightly negative. I'm like, mm, lock. Yeah. Here's where I think the balance is in all that. And it's so easy to get down on negative comments. For me, it's like, I see both. I see the good. I see the bad comments, but the only way to deal with and condition yourself to like the trolls of the world online is to truly not hear the good either. You know, yeah, because you can't get so high on your own supply. And then now mm. that that's building, now you get one negative comment. It like completely destroys your world. Yeah. Whereas consequently, if you don't hear either side, you see both. You just don't internalize either. You can almost move at your own, you yeah. know, vibration without without being affected by. That's why I like through this whole process. And I, I've seen this with you, too, like. With us on social media, there's zero ego whatsoever. Like there's no, yeah. you know, I, I we, we've we talked about this uh, off air a bunch too. You walk in and, and meet other, you know, influencers in the city or at sporting events and stuff. And you, you meet people with a couple hundred thousand followers that walk around kind of as if they're like what was Tom, Tom Brady, Brady and Giselle, <gasps> you know? Sad divorce there. Know. You know what I mean though? Yeah. But I'm telling you like the, there's a, so much, there's so much internal happiness in there if you can block out yeah. both sides you know and almost respond to all the good like i respond to almost every comment and every dm good or bad yeah but just not even letting that you know shake you know who you are right you know you're a strong independent badass bitch from east boston all right with mm -hmm. a <laughs> killer language there thank you, you know? right thanks yeah geez uh, i've been been asked this question to most guests here. What motivates you? What motivates me? Mm -hmm. In life. You. Wow, really? You definitely, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. I did not know you were going to say that. Me neither. Uh, <laughs> just kind of came out. Did you make it up? Or I don't did you know. Mean that? <laughs> no, but I mean, we talk about it all the time. Like, I'm always so, up, I'm so hot on myself. I'm like, what was it? Kevin. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I don't want the viewers to get lost, you know? <laughs> but I, I'm like, you always say how proud you are of me. I'm always so hard on myself because, like, I'm not where I want to be. No one's really ever where they want to be, though. Mm -hmm. um, but just you constantly, like, giving me that support, constantly telling me you're proud of me, um, seeing all the things you're doing, and you're so patient with it, too. Like, it motivates me mm. to be my best version of myself. Wow. I like yeah. that. Thanks. Look at you. What motivates you? Me? Uh, us. Us. Motivates me. Okay. You know, like we said earlier, but you're in that. Don't don't act uh, like yeah. we're gonna talk about it in the car riding. You, I said you, and then you said us. <laughs> me is the same thing. You know, that yeah. was, uh, you know, definitely us. You and I. Yeah. That's what motivates. That just made me think of it though. Some I've gotten a few of them, um, and I feel like we can't really answer this too well because we're Rhea again. What was it? Um, people keep asking though, like, how do we handle fights and things like that? With you and I? Yeah. We don't really fight. We, I know that's like, we've never been. And that's not us trying to like be fake and saying we don't fight. It's just that I think we're both like, we're saying we're both the same people that we're both like understanding when we stop and we listen and we hear what the other person has to say. Like there's things we disagree on a hundred percent, but like we both are really good at like letting the other person kind of like explain why you feel that way. Mm -hmm. Whether it be like something emotionally within the relationship or something like not even involved in the relationship, like maybe like a topic we disagree on. Mm -hmm. We both are very able to agree to disagree, but like talk about that and like educate one another. <laughs> I just sleep on the couch. Right, exactly. Sour, yeah, worst just, case, you know, not a problem. Yeah, what, where where do you think that comes from? Like in other in your past relationships yeah. were you the you were the one receiving the 
screaming matches and you were never really a yeller in fights? Oh my God. Think, well, no, I, I just immediately cry. But I also mm. think that side very early on in our relationship because I forget what it was that I was crying about early on in the relationship. I, oh. I think we were out of uh, chocolate chip muffins, I believe. <laughs> I like blueberry. You like right. chocolate chip. Right. No, it was because after three months, all my relationships would fail. So remember mm. at three months, oh, I got like. Oh, that's right. I yeah. forgot about that. So I was like crying about it and you were like, we like talked about it mm-hmm. and I've never spoken about my feelings mm. mm-hmm. in other relationships. You were, you and were. And they did, they always left after three months. So yeah. like, I think, you know. You were like a young Mark Wahlberg, you know, very wow. hard exterior. Mm. But then if you can get through that hard exterior, very hilarious human being who's like. You keep telling me I'm getting funny and funny. You are, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Your humor is increasing by the day, you know. But that definitely took some time to break down those walls and, you know. I just dabbed. Find you, you for, did you dab? <laughs> Try it again. Okay. That was good. Good. 3.8. It's kind of hard with the mic. I didn't, I don't have season tickets to the Pats, ma'am. I don't know what that means. Can you get some? Okay. Jesus Christ. All right. Any last words from you? Any, any advice to other relationships out there who are maybe in the social media space or maybe just starting out or maybe single people that are looking for advice in the, the dating pool? Honestly, my advice that I tell all my friends is to like to be picky because mm-hmm. I was always, always, always told them too picky. Mm-hmm. And was I slightly? Yes, of course. But also like I don't agree in settling and like, look, it worked out. And people are always like, well, how do you meet people? I was never on dating apps. Mm-hmm. Nothing against the dating apps. Me you never downloaded uh Oh, I did. No, I downloaded them, but I never had. Liar. Kidding. <laughs> But I never had an account. You could swipe without having like a name and a picture and stuff. And then um, it was just more for fun. Mm-hmm. But I never talked to people through it. I'm just, I'm too picky and I also don't want, one, I don't like when looks are the number one thing that you go off of. Because mm-hmm. um, I hate that people would always be so shocked to find like, like in college, they're like, oh, like what's your major? Like I'm not trying to put down any other majors. But when I would say it was <laughs> genetics, They'd be like, oh my God, you're like smart. And I'm like, yeah, like people just like, I don't like that I was always judged first for like the way I looked or dressed or whatever. Right. So that's why I didn't like the dating apps. Um, but anyway, so people always said I was too picky. I'll never find anyone, blah, 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 blah. And we found each other in the middle of a pandemic. Mm-hmm. You know, restaurants were down, clubs were down. All you could do was go on a walk. So be picky. Your person's out there. It's Mm. good to be single. Enjoy being single because he's literally up my ass every two seconds. Whoa. I like it. Whoa. Jeez. Stop making this This raunchy. My mother listens to this show. That's not what I meant. You up my ass. I like it is what I heard. (laughs) That's fucking crazy. Dude, you said that. You said that in front of three cameras. Caught in 4K. Okay. Wow. Any advice from you, Kevin? That I think pretty much does it. Keep your cheeks tight. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. So, so my advice back to that Mom would be. Sorry, toots a lot. <laughs> Anywho, uh, that is the No Limits podcast. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me.